Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sassfund and the presentation of our results for the past financial year. I hope you find them to your satisfaction. Uh, the program will start with the, pre the figures of Business and Financial Review by Tyrone Sinsergy, the Group Financial Director, and we will then go on to segmental reviews of the different divisions of the bank, which will be made by the divisional heads. Uh, Roland Sassoon will then present a strategic overview of the bank, and after that we'll take questions and answers. Thank you very much. Tyrone. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it's my pleasure to present the group results for the year ended 30 June 2012. Um, Johnny. Okay. Just before we get into the actual financial results, just an overview of the business model for Sassfin Bank. Um, with the expansion in our wide range of products and services, it's appropriate that we just run through our target markets. We can dissect the target markets into two components, namely business clients and our wealth clients. The business clients comprise owner-managed businesses and SMEs, importers, exporters, manufacturers, equipment suppliers, medium and large corporates, small and mid-cap listed companies. On the wealth clients, we have retail depositors, high net worth individuals, independent financial advisors, and pension funds. That is quite a broad range of uh, our client base and target market. Moving on to the business banking, which is one of the five segments that uh, we go to market with. The business banking comprises largely the lending activities of the group, which is made up of our trade and data finance and equipment finance, which is further broken down into rental finance and capital equipment finance that we provide to the SME and corporate markets. Looking at the capital segment, this uh, is the home for the private and property equity business together with our corporate finance. Our corporate finance uh, offering includes debt and equity capital markets, mergers and acquisitions, and sponsor services. The wealth management offering principally has the following uh, uh, services and uh, product offerings, asset consulting, asset management, a full asset management offering, financial planning, stock broking, and portfolio management. Our treasury activities have has been uh, slightly restructured. It now principally includes the money market activities and funding for the group together with our foreign exchange services as an authorized dealer. Our rebranded segment called Commercial Solutions, which was uh, historically known as risk and, health, uh, risk and Logistics, comprises the Logistics and Trade Solutions, which incorporates the iQuad uh, business uh, services and offerings. We'll delve into that a little deeper. Health and short-term insurance, verifica verification services, and growth incentives. Looking at the key features of the results for 2012, profit before tax came in showed a strong performance of 30% up to 174 million from 134 million rand. Profit for the year, largely affected by a higher tax charge and a tax rate, which I'll go into a little, uh, a little de in a little more detail later on, showed a 17% increase at 133 million rand, whilst headline earnings and headline earnings per share, after adjusting for certain non-headline non earning adjusting items, came in at a 16% increase, 111 million rand, and three rand 44 cents per share. Dividends per share for the year, in line with the group's policy of two and a half times, dividend cover, a 16% increase at 137 cents per share. Once again, the group enjoyed significant asset growth. Our total assets grew by 25% to uh, approximately 5.5 billion rand, up from 4.4 over 2011. Total equity remains solid, at 1.2 billion, a 6% increase. Gross loans and advances, once again, showed 
and, in, in, and encourage an increase of 21% to 2.9 billion rand, and we had growth in all sectors of our uh, lending book. Total funding, we've raised funding in excess of about 1, 1 billion rand for the year under review, up to 3.8 billion rand, a 36% increase over 2011. Funds under advisement and management, which is our funds uh, in the wealth management sector, showed a significant increase to 55 billion rand, up 22%. Return on ordinary shareholders' equity, a marginal growth from 11 to 12%. And again, this has been affected by the large capital base and also the very, uh, very uh, uh, excessive surplus cash that we hold. Group capital adequacy still in the 30% range, around 30% uh, are down two basis points from last year, well above our minimum capital requirements. Looking at the asset side of our balance sheet, cash and liquid assets at 1.5 billion rand, significant increase over last year, and that has been largely underpinned by the funding activities that the, groups, uh, uh, the group uh, did over the past year. Investment securities shows a slight decrease down from 405 million to 342. That is the private equity and property equity portfolio, some exits and write downs in some of our carrying values. Investments in intangibles, which includes our investments in associates and uh, intangibles and goodwill on the acquisition of some of the subsidiaries, up 14%, largely due to the acquisition of iQuad, which I'll cover in a little more detail as we go along. Property plant and equipment down 67% from 175. The primary reason for that is the sale of this uh, our head office building to the annuity property fund in line with the group's strategy of liquefying fixed property that we carry on balance sheet. Other assets shows an increase of 21% to 466 million. That is largely client trades for our stock broking uh, business. That's the major component of that. Overall assets at 5.5 billion, a 25% increase over 2011. On the liability side, equity at one point, just under 1.2 billion. Interbank funding, we've uh, utilized some of our funding lines there. We have some funding lines in excess of 550 million. Our deposit book has grown significantly and very encouragingly, we've lengthened the maturity profile of our deposit book. That's in terms of our focus attention to grow deposits, up 47% to just under 1.8 billion rand. Long-term loans, the group has raised over the past year approximately 500, 450 million rand in long-term funding from a combination of DFIs, the European DFIs and the IFC. Um, this bodes very well for our Basel III compliance from a liquidity point of view. Debt securities, that is our securitized notes that we issue, remain flat. Uh, we had, didn't do an, a new tranche for the year under review. And other, which comprises client trades as well, up ni down 19, oh, sorry, should be up 19% to 530 million rand. Looking at the financial performance, interest income, in line with the growth in our book, came in, a, it showed a 21% increase underpinned by the growth in our advances and uh, advances book together with margin retention in a very competitive market. Interest expense shows a sharp increase of 38%. However, that is the twin impact of the long-term funding that we raised over the year together with the growth in our deposit book showed an increase in our cost of funding for the year under review. That led to a net interest income showing a 6% increase uh, some some comp compression on our margin due to the higher level of surplus cash that we hold. Other income grew 30%, largely driven by the acquisition of iQuad that contributes uh, to our non-banking activities. And we had other income increase from the rest of the business, especially wealth management and commercial solutions, which is in line with our top line growth objectives. Total income still encouraging at a 21% increase, 650 million rand from 536 in 2011. Impairment losses. 
a positive downward trend yet again, down from 38 million to 17 million, a 56% decrease in our impairment losses. That translates to a credit loss ratio of about 0.6%, down from 1.7 in the previous year. I'll cover that also in a little more detail. Operating expenses shows a sharp increase again of 26%. That's largely due to the acquisition of the iQuad cost base that we consolidated into our numbers. Excluding that, our cost growth for the year has been around 14%, which is largely due to further increases in our IT platform and staff, uh, staff and talent that we had to bring on board as we expand. Profit before tax at 174 million rand, a 30% increase. Our income tax expense looks very high. Uh, our effective tax rate of 24% up from uh, last year's of 15, largely due to some once-off tax charges that we had to uh, bring, in, bring on board this year. It's changing CGT rates affected our private and property equity portfolio. The CGT capital gains tax on the sale of this building was affected our income tax line and also a shift from uh, shifting profits from our lower tax jurisdiction to a higher tax base led to that. Profit after tax at 17%, 133 million rand, and headline earnings after accounting for minority interest and preference shares up 16% to 111 million rand for the year. Looking at the segmental analysis, Yes, uh, business banking is still a primary contributor, uh, contributed some 68% of the group profits. However, it's down from last year of 77%. And I think that's encouraging in the sense that other businesses such as wealth and commercial solutions are showing positive increases in profit contributions, which is in line with our group strategy of growing um, and growing the other non-banking activities of the group. I'm going to go on to the trend analysis just to take you through some highlights. The first one is our capital adequacy position. Uh, last year, 32. This year, 30. And in terms of a pro, on a pro forma base, uh, uh, basis for Basel III, we're still at a 30% level. And uh, at that includes a core tier one component around about 27%, which is the main measure of capital strength in terms of Basel III. Our group loans and advances, that shows an interesting trend over the past five years. Uh, post the crisis, we had a, as we lag behind the market, and I think that's quite evident, we had an increase in NPLs, credit loss ratios, and we've seen a steady decrease over the years. Down to, our NPLs down to 6.4%, provisions to advances at 33 and our credit loss ratio of 0.6%, despite the growth in our advances of 21%. Composition of income, in line with growing our non-banking activities and non-interest uh, revenue, we've seen um, our non-interest income grow to 69%, up from last year 64, and uh, interest income now contributes 31% of the group's total income base. Cost to income ratio. This is uh, still relatively high at 70%. However, it is stabilizing. And when you exclude the IQUAD cost, our, our cost to income ratio is slightly below 70%. And I think that is receiving the attention of management on a focused and renewed basis to bring down our cost to income ratio to the, to the target range of that we've set around about 60 to 65% over the next two to three years. It's important to note that uh, having the significant uh, cash surplus of around one, one and a half billion rand, that affects our cost to income ratio as well because we can't re redeploy that into higher yielding assets straight away. Group headline earnings per share and dividends per share. After the downward trend, we can see an upward pickup in 2012, up at 3.44 cents a share and 137 cents per share as well. Sorry, yeah, 137 cents per share for the dividends. 
Looking at the business unit review, the segmental analysis, business banking, a major contributor of the group's profit, 91 million rand, up marginally over last year, 3%, but a solid performance once again. That was underpinned by strong growth in advances, as reflected in this uh, graph. Gross advances went up to about, uh, on the business banking side from 2.2 billion to just under two, uh, sorry, just over 2.7 billion rand for the year. Post the crisis, we can see a nice steady downward trend in terms of NPLs down 3.5%, provisions to advances down to 2.7%, and a credit loss ratio of 0.2 on a book of 2.7 billion rand. Once again, indic indicative of the inherent asset quality and the sound credit processes in SASFIN. It's interesting, the credit loss ratio pre the crisis in 2008 was 0.2%, and it's also 02 now but on a much higher book. The business banking, some of the highlights in this division, a new management and team structure firmly in place. Our equipment rentals division continues to be a market leader. Credit loss ratio, as I mentioned, down to 0.23% from 07 We have a new IT system in place, has been impl implemented for the, in this year. Uh, we expect further efficiencies and enhanced customer experience will start to flow going forward. We encourage by a strong pipeline that's in place, and the, the business now has launched a unique start-to-finish import solution for its uh, owner-managed businesses and SME client base. Treasury, a flat performance of a profit for the year around about 6 million rand year on year. The Treasury's main focus this year has been obviously the growth and diversification of our funding base. I alluded to this earlier. Our funding base increased to 3.8 billion rand, up from 2.8, with improved and a lengthened deposit profile and a funding profile. However, it did come with an increased cost of funding at favorable rates, though. Our new deposit channels are successful. We've grown our deposit book up to 1.8 billion, up 47%. The deposit mix improved. We have a greater lengthening of uh, the maturity profile into notice and fixed deposits, which all bodes very well for the new liquidity requirements in terms of Basel III. We successfully concluded long-term facilities, namely a 35 million euro facility from the three European DFIs, FMO, DEG, and Proparco, and also a $10 million, $10 million facility with the IFC, and the Canadian Climate Change Program for Energy Efficiency Loans. Based on our internal assessments, we're pleased to, to report that the group meets the, uh, the liquidity coverage ratio and net stable funding ratio as prescribed by Basel III liquidity requirements. We continue to strategize and grow our funding base, and in line with that, the group has planned a corporate bond issuance for the first quarter of the 2013 year, and we hopefully that will be the start of a few corporate bond issuers. Our International Treasury Division, the focus here has been on achieving critical mass and volume. Um, we've seen forex sales growth of about 60%. We've now bundled the, the forex foreign exchange service offering with our start to finish import solution product. We've now also, to, to achieve this, the growth and the, the sales that we'd want, we've expanded the sales and dealing teams as well. Securitization has been a key form of funding for the group over the last 20 years. In, 2011, uh, in November 2011, we successfully refinanced 317 million rand worth of our notes. Some highlights of our vehicle, again, high margins, granular portfolio, a 20, 20 year proven track record and low correlation risk. Just reflecting our group funding mix at 30 June, this is the four pillars that the group has uh, primarily funds the, funds, funds the group, comprised in interbank funding, some utilization there. As I mentioned, we have something in the region of 550 million rand worth of interbank facilities available deposit from customers com 
constitute around 48% of our funding base. Debt security is 34% and long-term loans 14. You will notice that there's been a, an increase in long-term loans funding and deposits and a, greater, and, a, and a decrease in the reliance on securitization funding. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of my presentation. I'm going to hand over to David uh, Edwards to take you through the commercial solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Tyrone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my role today is to go through the performance of the commercial solutions division, which collectively consists of the iQuad Group, uh, Premier Freight, together with uh, Sassfin's healthcare consulting and short-term insurance businesses. So if we just look at the um, overall performance from commercial solutions, uh, we achieved a profit in the current year of 19.2 million uh, versus a profit in 2011 of 6.9 million. And the contribution of that profit came from the following uh, businesses. Uh, iQuad Group contributed 13.2 million, uh, Premier Freight 4.3 million, and Healthcare in Short Term 1.7 million. Just to move on to the uh, performance of the individual business units and to go through those in a little bit more detail, um, starting with the iQuad Group, uh, which is my background. I'm currently the CEO of the iQuad Group. And um, the state of play with iQuad at the moment is that Sassfin owns 68% of the group. And uh, you'll see further on in this uh, first slide that they've also uh, decided to make an offer to minorities. And the intention is that um, the iQuad Group will delist from the Alt-X and become a 100% owned subsidiary of uh, Sassfin in uh, the next 68 weeks. Just by way of a brief background, uh, just to give you some insights into what it is that iQuad does, uh, we're involved in outsourcing of financial and compliance services to business. And we operate in four key areas um, uh, or, or business pillars. The first one being government incentives, where we assist businesses to access government incentives that are offered through the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, predominantly in the manufacturing industry, but also in the tourism sector for businesses that are starting up or expanding their operations. Uh, secondly, we have a global trade leg to our business. And uh, in our global trade leg, we provide uh, foreign exchange uh, risk management solutions to clients. We also do uh, duty optimization work for clients, for clients that have paid import duty and are entitled to claim that import duty back. And then finally, we're involved in uh, a variety of uh, customs compliance activities. Uh, there's a really strong fit. Um, uh, well, sorry, if I just go back to the business pillars. The third pillar is uh, business development, where we do ISO management consulting uh, to assist clients in ISO certification. And, and then finally, in our verification pillar, we're involved in B verification, B consulting, and also uh, VAT uh, reviews to ensure that clients are not overpaying or overly exposed on their VAT compliance. Um, there's a very strong fit in terms of the culture, the uh, product offering, and also the client base uh, of iQuad to that of Sassfin. And we feel that we are actually uniquely placed to offer our clients what we term start to finish solutions in a couple of key areas. So if we look at a few examples, the first one would be in our um, business banking and uh, asset financing side, where uh, Sassfin has got the expertise to offer the client advice around lending, and iQuad has got the expertise to assist clients in accessing the DTI incentives. And collectively, we're able to offer a compelling uh, service to our clients that no other a competitor can offer in the marketplace. If we look at the same concept from a global trade perspective, um, our expertise around uh, foreign exchange risk management coupled with Sassfin's expertise when it comes to uh, foreign exchange execution, trade finance and premier freight when it comes to the physical movements of the goods ensures that we're actually able to offer a really compelling solution in that area as well. And we've most recently launched what we term a energy efficiency start to finish solution where we are picking up in a very hot topic in the market at the moment and, um, and identifying mechanisms to assist our clients in um, reducing the energy consumption inside their uh, manufacturing concerns. 
Um, if we could then just move on to the uh, premier freight uh, business units. Uh, during the last financial year, Sassfin have also acquired the minorities in Premier Freight, and uh, Premier is now a 100% owned subsidiary of Sassfin. Uh, in terms of performance, it's been a tough year in the global trade environment. 